Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 2 of Altered Carbon. Obviously, with these reviews, I'm going to start off with non-spoilers, but then I'm going to make it a clear-cut point when I'm going to start talking about spoilers. But in general, how to feel about this season, I thought this season was great. Um, if you really like Altered Carbon Season 1, you're really going to like Altered Carbon Season 2. They do a lot of interesting things. And that should kind of expand upon some world building. Obviously, you know, since we're kind of in that spoiler territory, hopefully you've seen, well, not spoiler territory, but, you know, obviously, even non-spoiler wise, if you've seen season one, you know where season one ended off when it came to talk story. And it's like, okay, so like, obviously he's looking down, um, looking, trying to find Kel. And obviously we're kind of picking up with that story and he ends up kind of getting wrapped up in something else uh, entirely. It ends up being a long range of many different things uh plenty of action to keep you satisfied but there's also this nice element of like I brought up earlier world building where we start like we start like going down the lanes of stuff that was brought up last season even open threads that were uh introduced and you know sorted with a little bit last season but we never got complete resolutions to we get the continuation of those as well as other things like things that were just small things and then now become huge plot points like I said I'm trying to avoid spoilers but I think Season 2 is a hell of a good time, so uh, it is a little shorter than Season 1. Season 1's 10 episodes, Season 2's only 8, but it's still worth, well worth the ride because, you know, it's very still that whole conversation about, you know... Um, people you know it, it keeps up almost like a lot of that philosophy and morality that the first season has about you know living for such a long time like the kind of cost that can come with it and there's many different ways they kind of like expand upon that in new ways this season so you know i'm just kind of leaving it at that but i think if you like i said if you really enjoyed season one i really believe you're really going to really enjoy season two but that's just my opinion uh do note that going forward i will be going into spoilers so you have been warned Okay, some quick things. Obviously, you know, because uh, a uh, question I had because of the trailers and everything, I was wondering, like, okay, like, I was wondering, because I didn't think Anthony Mackie's character was, go like, the body that, you know, talk ends up in this um, season. I didn't think it would be, I, I was wondering if they were going to make it so that season two is picking up right after season one. Is it supposed to be like, oh, like, the body he got at the end of season one is actually Anthony Mackie's, or was it just, like, or was it later on in the timeline? And it's like, no, it's later on in the timeline, because it's literally been 30 years since season one. So, I, I like that. I mean, to be fair, it kind of makes sense with the way stacks work and everything. I mean, the whole immortality thing kind of runs, reigns a little true in this, so, like, you can, like, fiddle around with time and stuff like that. Uh, but I guess he hasn't run, uh, get, the way the conversation makes it seem like they haven't been back to Bay City and all that time because obviously talk is you know busy looking for Kel so he has no reason to kind of you know stop and he has no I mean uh, for him I guess it's like all, uh, in all honesty he has friends back there but not too much is waiting for him in Bay City I was curious about this whole Poe situation and it turns out oh Poe he did bring Poe with him it's just that basically Poe is glitching because of what uh, Liam did to him uh, in season one so it's like basically he's fragmented and he's kind of breaking down. He kind of glitches out where he ends up forgetting stuff. Uh, but basically, we find out that um, Tak has been body hopping from bo different bodies. And uh, he ends up running in. Well, because there's a lady named Trap. We end up finding out she's a bounty hunter. Was looking for Tak. Interesting enough, played by uh, Simone uh, Misik. Obviously, like, mo you know, Netflix-wise. Inter and interesting enough, obviously, she played Misty Knight in both Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Um... What I think that's interesting because obviously you, uh, Anthony Mackie, you know, plays the Falcon and, you know, um, and the MCU and for her to be Misty Knight. So I just think that's kind of a nice connection for them to build, uh, be in a series. But it's like, uh, I like the twist where it turned out Talk was the one singing the entire time. I was like, oh, were you always a singer or is it just because, I wonder how does that work? Do you actually have the talent of singing or was it just a sleeve you were in which just a, it was a talented singer or had vocal, good vocal range or something? We never get too much in the nitty gritty, but I'm curious about that. And I know it pissed Talk off too because he's like, because he's going to bring it up later on because he's like, every time he turns around, he gets shot. He hates being shot. That's literally how he died at the beginning of season one, getting shot to death. And it's like, lo and behold, it's kind of a repeat of history. So basically, it turns out there's this uh, meth named um, Axley who ended up, uh, interesting enough, played by uh, Michael Shank. Um, popped up in uh, different uh, stuff. Interesting, the one that kind of comes to my head the most is like um, him as Hulk, um, Hulkman, and... Um, Smallville, but regardless, he, he's popped up in other things, but I was like, oh, uh, 
turn out not to be a, a part of this as, you know, he didn't pop up in this that much. Uh, I almost thought it was kind of interesting. I'm like, oh, is history literally repeating itself? It's like freaking maps. They're always coming to basically screw you over because it's like, oh, you literally had to deal with Baincroft the last season. So I'm like, oh, now you got to deal with um, Axley. But it's like, but then Axley is like, oh, I know exactly where um, Kel is and everything. And it's like, okay. So sadly, you know, he has no choice but to work with him. But then when he actually pops up in Anthony Mackie's body, it's like, oh, literally everyone's dead. I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting it. And when he had the poison on his neck, I was like, and the fact is, it seemed like, I was like, oh, is that supposed to, I was like, I was wondering, I was like, is that supposed to be Rawlings? Like, I was wondering if it's supposed to be the same virus that basically ended up killing the, um, the uh, envoys, but it turned out not to be the case. It ended up being something else entirely, but um, he ends up getting jumped. And it's like, okay, so I, I like the way the episode went about, you know, um, kind of deal with this stuff of trying to figure out. Because now he's, it's so interesting because now he kind of has to solve another meth's murder uh, just because he needs to find out answers about who it was because this might also be tied to Kel. Interesting enough, and I like how they kind of circle this all back around. It all comes full circle to a certain extent because now uh, he's back on Harlan. Apparently, it. I mean, it kind of makes sense in the grand scheme of things. He went back to Harlan's world at the end of season one. I mean, that's where, you know, it's like you start at the beginning. That was the last time he saw uh, Kel and uh, Ray. So it's like, why not go back to the place? But he did find her. So he they went, apparently they've been traveling to several worlds for the past 30 years, 42 different planets. And now they end up back here. Because obviously, obviously Harlan's world is Top's home. So it's like... It's like he already kind of had a, this is literally his third time back here because obviously he popped back, you know, when um, Jaeger, um, Jaeger, I said Jaeger, Jaeger uh, sent him back here, like obviously before the whole, you know, before he had met up with Ray again, uh, you know, as an adult and everything. So that, there was that moment, but then like now, you know, at the end of season one, obviously in between season one and season two, and now here back at the beginning of season two, he's back on it. So it's literally his third time back home and it just, it's almost like he can't escape the place, you know? I mean, that's kind of the message of the season two is like, you know, kind of no matter where you go, you kind of basically have your ghost always following you, so... But uh, nevertheless, um, there's a guy that uh, Tok has connection to, uh, Tanaseda, which is interesting considering the fact is it kind of reminds him like, all right, this is why I died in the first place uh, back in season one, just because it's like, oh yeah, like uh, Soneda, um basically, you know, him and Tok actually have a long history because that was kind of what ended up getting, you know, talk caught in the first place, you know, so it's just interesting. I love that whole thing, like, that whole, like, him and Yukido, uh, uh, Tanaseda's, uh, son and everything, and it's kind of like, because he used, um, uh, Tanaseda's name, and Yukido is like, oh, you, you think we wouldn't know, and proceeds to be a fight, but then, like, talk kind of ends up losing in the end, but it's like, oh, Tanaseda, it's like, oh, no, he let you win, Go ahead, show them who they're really messing with. And obviously, because of the new upgrades to his body, he's able to, like, summon up the guns. Because uh, they kind of, I think that's kind of interesting. I think a lot of people this season ended up having that upgrade to their sleeves, the whole, like, magneticness uh, to, their gun, uh, to their hands, kind of being able to summon guns and stuff like that. Uh, but the fact is, like, obviously, Talk is trying to figure this whole situation out. Once again, it's just like another mystery landing in his lap. At the same time, also, he's having to deal with the fact is that Poe is unreliable as he is. I mean, the sad thing is, Talk wants Poe to reset himself, but Poe doesn't want to do that because for Poe, it's like, it would mean erasing everything. That means everything he went, oh, his entire life, everything that he experienced prior to meeting Talk in season one, everything they went through together in season one, plus everything they've been through for the past 30 years. Like, it's like you're asking me to erase all that, including Lizzie, because Lizzie basically was his best friend, you know? And that kind of comes up later on because it's like, he treasures her because she's one of the few people that it's like, oh, like she wrote, like that time they spent together, it's like he, you know, was helping her, but in turn, she was actually helping him become more human, what it means to like, you know, care for someone, to be there for someone, you know? So I think that's just kind of an interesting and complicated element to it because it's like, oh, like because Tok was so caught up in his whole search for Kel and just how pissed he was about Poe kind of failing him that he didn't really recognize like, you know, how hard it would be for Poe to kind of reset, you know? 
I mean, we, I mean, I, I think the argument could be made, and it kind of comes up later on. Is I think Talk could also make the argument about like it, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff he wishes that he can forget. Obviously, he's being haunted by the fact that it's so like, all right, let's not forget I killed my only living family and left in this world, you know, Ray. And that that still haunts him, you know, about the choices he made. And it's kind of like, obviously, he can't do anything about it now. Uh, but, uh, basically, we kind of find out some stuff about Harlan's world. Obviously, uh, it's being governed by um, Danica, who's uh, played by the actress who played. I'm not familiar with the show. I only know about the show through my family because my sisters and my mom uh, watch it. But uh, Power, she played Angela. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I thought that was kind of interesting. Basically, she's at that time dealing with like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to stop all these Celtists uh, because basically on Har um, Harlan's world has been kind of in this uh, war with like the uh, Celtists for such a long time. And it's so interesting to think about it because it's like obviously Takeshi actually being like the, the last envoy to know that basically there is an entity that continued uh, – her work, Kel's work, like, well after she was gone. I mean, I guess that was the whole point, like, for it to kind of just start a revolution and it can see it kind of continued modern day. But obviously she's trying to, like, you know, immediate the peace, you know, because obviously she's trying to prove herself. They're like, no, 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 I got everything on control. But there's this dude from the uh, protectorate uh, named uh, Carrera who's kind of making an excuse to stay on the planet, but then this whole thing with Axley and then Takeshi, especially when he finds out who Takeshi is, but then the moment he starts going like, oh, I, I don't I know you and everything, I'm like, the moment he starts saying, I'm like, Jaeger? Turns out, totally turns out to be Jaeger. It's like, because they ended up talking about an interesting thing that uh, we never really got an explanation for. is like why Tok wasn't in his original body at the beginning of the season. Like, did he just abandon his body? It's like, no, we find out that basically when uh, people... the uh, Basically, the protectorate didn't want to kind of let their fumble kind of slip out. They're like, oh, like our... Uh, one of ours, uh, Takeshi, ended up kind of going rogue. So basically, they took him out of his body and kind of put him in another sleeve. That's hence why, because it's it, they didn't want to kind of turn a hero out of him because it would have made him into a bit of a martyr and it would have been like having to recognize their own mistakes. So they that's why Tuck wasn't in his original body at the time. And it seems like basically the same thing happened to Carrera. He basically got punished because Tuck, he's the one who literally brought Tuck into all of this. So basically his name kind of got buried. That's why he's kind of like this no-name Carrera. And that's what this is all about, why he's so intent on trying to prove himself. Because basically Harlan's world has kind of always been at a stalemate with the uh, protectorate. Basically it's like... Uh, they can kind of do whatever they want to. Like, they're kind of left to their own devices. And Danica's trying to keep that up. But Carrera's kind of muzzling in because he, he has a uh, means of kind of getting inside now. And he's using this whole Axley situation as well as talk as a means to kind of like, you know, cut through that uh, boundaries that, you know, um, Danica had, you know, created. Uh, there's a whole thing where, like, you know, Jaeger got inside of his mind and ended up pulling out, uh, basically, like, the images in his head of trying to, like, get, like, pr trying to print out, like, memories, essentially. And I love that they were doing it first, and then the first thing that popped up is showed, like, Carrera on, like, a unicorn or something, like, some kind of creature. It was, like, him butt naked. And then you see, even though Takeshi's, like, underneath all that, like, you know, uh, they're trying to probe his mind and everything, he's smiling through it. But nevertheless, they ended up capturing, you know... Uh, images of all the people that are important to him that includes um, uh, Vernon, uh, Kristen, um, obviously Raylene, and then obviously, you know, um, Kel. And then, like, seeing Ray and Kel pieced it together for Jaeger to make him realize, oh, you're top, because top kept hiding his identity because Kel got caught up in the mix of this because not only did she kill Axe, um, Actually, that first meth, she apparently kills two other meths that were kind of with him because Tak was trying to figure out like what this was all about. And she showed up because he realized in the back of his mind, like he pieced it together, like he remembered more than he thought he did. And he remembers Kel attacked him. But she's like, I'm not here for you. It's almost like she kind of saw through him, didn't see him, but just rather saw through him. And so... At first, it's kind of like, what is this all about? Like, why is she doing this? Why? Is she? I mean, it makes sense in the end because meths kind of represent everything that she was against. You know, she wanted to kind of restore hu um, humanity's well, humanity and meths. People who've lived on for so long who basically keep up that pretense of immortality. You know, it um, 
you know, it, it's kind of everything she was against, but it just like, it didn't seem like she recognized talk. It wasn't until at one point she threw like a knife got thrown and she kept, she grabbed it. And then she looked at him and it was like talk cause it clicked in her head, but talk, let her get away and not wanting to let anyone know about her at all. Like, even though he's not the one behind these murders, he took the fall for it just because he didn't want to let them know where Kel was because that's also we ended up finding out there's actually kind of like what was it the soul market that's actually depressing as hell because there's actually too many there's way more stacks on harlan's world than there are sleeves so there's so many like people that kind of fall between the cracks you know and basically that dude who runs the place basically uh holds people's well important like holds people for ransom it's like oh you can have this person back for a certain amount of money which is like that's so shitty kind of ransom them to their families but also he would take their memories and make it kind of basically a drug where it's like oh you kind of get like drugged up on people's memories and experiences and it's just like that whole angle to it like it's only like the only like it's a part of one episode and it kind of comes back later on but like that was just kind of a mess up i mean showing you kind of just a messed up angle of harlan's world because actually it's interesting because obviously like this is our first season really experiencing harlan's world because we got bits and pieces of it but only in like the flashback of you know understanding how talk got where he was you know from him being with uh uh, from a little boy to basically being an envoy like that story in between so that's our only experience with harlan's world so this is our first time to really spend a lot of time there getting to really understand you know the world and everything so talk ends up having to basically face off again protectorate uh people uh disguised as the people he cared about first is as Kristen. we ended up learning something really interesting because of that we ended up finding out that uh basically talk got it set up so that basically at least the two kids could get spin back up spun back up but in different bodies because her mom and uh, i'm assuming yeah that was like her uncle basically i'm sure they're like they were big believers in not coming back so she respected her wishes and didn't but she, luckily the kids were i guess maybe they hadn't converted you know, so they could be spun back up. So, but that was kind of an interesting little tie into like season one to let us know, yeah, it was a tragedy, but hey, at least it didn't end a hundred. It ended terribly, but not as terrible as it could have been. At the very least, Kristen still has some of her family around, you know, so there's at least something to that. So now he has to literally proceed to fight people. And he's even apologizing to Kristen, even though it's not really her, just because he blames himself because it's like, yeah, because I was in your life, literally, uh, my sister sent, uh, uh, you know, uh, Leon uh, to basically kill your family. And that's on me. Then like the fake Vern, uh, Vernon shows up and it's like, oh, like talk is like Vernon hit harder than that. And then lo and behold, it's hit, you know, another one shows up as his sister, but that's his kryptonite because it's like, Raylene obviously is like his guilt over what he did to her killing her it it still haunts him obviously and then like we had the other one pretending to be Kel and the moment she was pretending to be Kel I was like the real Kel is going to show up isn't and lo and behold she does and she has talks back it ends up killing Raylene like even though she, you know we find out later on she doesn't remember that's got to be at least a little satisfying to a certain extent considering the fact is what we learned between about Ray and Kel it's got to be subconsciously that's got to be a little satisfactory you know uh because it turns out like kel doesn't remember anything her uh memories are kind of gone and but she's driven by like something there's there's an ember of like those memories there because like she was buried deep down and whatever this whole thing is and she was able to kind of claw back to the top because talk reached out to her she heard his voice and it made her be able to kind of rise to the surface and once she saw like oh what was happening to him that he was basically put into that place known as the circle it's basically like a fight to the death type of situation which you're literally in basically another fight club you were in one last season too but now it kind of you know um she felt like i have to come and see him and it's like it's got to be complicated because it's like you know all there is to know about you know kel you spent so much time with her this is the woman you love but she doesn't recognize you but he hasn't given up on her at the same time well speaking of love because poe kind of finds a little bit of love because he meets you know dig I, I could, there's also a part of me that was contemplating, should I just refer to her as 301? Because obviously, like, they're all known as digs, but basically they're, they're also named by the dig sites that they worked on. Uh, so, cause she's basically an AI archaeologist. And so, but uh, he just refers to her as Miss Dig. Uh, but uh, Dig, uh, you know, uh, so I know, I should look into it. That actress who plays Dig looks so familiar. I don't know what I know her from. Um, they seem a lot more, those um, AI, um, 
archaeology, they seem much bit nicer than the hotel AIs, because uh, hotel AIs were kind of assholes last season, but regardless, especially the one in particular, the one that, you know, Poe ends up kind of uh, using Rollins to kill, that one in particular. Um, but the fact of the matter is that um, she ends up, you know, being someone that Poe can kind of turn to, because obviously he's trying to help, you know, free uh, talk from the circle and everything, because he tried to go to uh, Trep, but Trep was no help, because she's kind of got her own thing going on, and she doesn't want to get in the middle of, you know, everything that, you know, talk is involved in, uh, because we end up finding out she's actually looking for someone, because um, cause talk ends up giving her all those... Um, bounties and he's like she's like wait what you took down all the five top people and like just to get to me and it was like yeah because he needed her help and then we found out that situation about her brother like because at first you knew it had to be someone important to her it's like she was literally taking all the money she was getting from those bounties to basically get any information about her brother um it's actually you know kind of sad because obviously it turns out like her she didn't know her brother as well as she thought she did because it turns out he was a Celtist and it's like, well, my brother would never believed in all that, but it turns out like he did and she didn't know about it because it turns out later on her dad knew, but not her. And it's like, well, he probably didn't tell you because you were actually more of a parent to him than I was because, you know, their dad kind of went in and out of jail. So it's like it's that complicated thing of, you know, complicated, you know, fa family and parents is because of that upbringing. Like it kind of led, you know, them to, I guess, being lost and kind of finding their own way, I guess, like, you know. Trep ended up becoming a bounty hunter, and obviously, um, you know, her brother ended up becoming a Celt. That's like kind of trying to find their own way because, you know, it seems like she was kind of the more responsible and she was kind of the parent. So it seemed like her brother, uh, Anil, would kind of constantly get in trouble and she'd kind of have to, you know, you know, fix things for him essentially. I did like that element I thought was kind of interesting was, um, when uh, Kel actually showed up and during the fight she started bleeding for real and then it was like, wait, that's not the uh, uh, fake, that's or organic, that's the real Kel. And it's like, wait, what? And the woman, that, what's her name? Uh, the woman that ended up cutting off the lights to help them. I was like, oh, she's like, oh, it's like, oh, she said Keltus? I was like, oh, that, that element didn't come up much uh, during the season. That would have actually been pretty dope to see more of that. But there being like secret Keltus all over the place, but it turns out uh, not to be the case at all. Um, but she ended up being one. And then Jaeger later on, like, I'm gonna go ahead and skip around to it. Danica's whole like pretense of like, oh yeah, the war between, um, the uh between her and the uh Celtis, I kind of figured early on that it wasn't right. Like there were just certain inconsistencies that didn't seem right. Cause at first I thought like home dude Kemp, I almost thought he was like I thought maybe he was a real person, but he died. Because obviously like the um the protectorate kind of um already spun its own like propaganda about the envoys and um Kel, especially when she ended up looking herself up and it's like, wait, what? I'm this, I'm that. But it's like, no, they try to make it seem like you were evil. It's like, yeah, you were bringing death back, but it's for the purpose of we, we took what you made, you, Nadia, made this stuff because you wanted to travel the stars. And we as humans, we twisted that and made it evil. Like, you know, so it's like you were just correcting something, you what you believe to be a mistake, you know, something that was a gift turning into something terrible because, well, people can be terrible, especially you get them a long enough lifetime to kind of eventually lose themselves along the way you know that's kind of the whole point of everything but um circling uh back to the point i was uh, trying to make but the fact is that it just it didn't seem right like i felt like it was more propaganda that kemp was someone that lived but he actually's been dead the entire time i thought that that's why when kemp had she showed up later on, i was like oh you actually are real but i was just like nah there's still something just about this that just don't it don't quite feel right you know it, especially because it seemed like it was a more recent thing too like I just because it didn't seem like it was a continuous thing like the uprising got shut down like 300 years ago but then all of a sudden it's a situation of now they're suddenly like this resistance or something because the way the conversation made it seem like it was something that happened in the past 20 years but I'm like that's 300 years something could have already happened so why wait to this so it's like but it seems like that's probably around the time Danica well that kind of fit in that time frame probably of like her being like okay well no because it definitely well because yeah because last time they were there was 30 years ago when her dad was still kind of in charge so she kind of started all that just for so people would still need her to be like oh here's an issue you need me here to kind of fix it type of situation so 
that was kind of like, like I said, just stuff immediately didn't sit right with the whole Kemp situation. Um, the other element to this I think is kind of interesting. I do apologize. I'm really all over the place. But uh, the whole situation where um, it turns out like what this is all about uh, with um, Kel, with the Elder. I didn't figure out the Elder situation until um, Tanaseda died. And... Um, uh, Tak went inside of his stack to see, see his memories and you see all the founders gathered around. It's like, oh, and like the way um, Tanaseda, like he was like, oh, telling Danica, hey, give this note, to, give this to your dad. And then um, uh, Dugan ended up seeing it too. He got freaked out because at first I was thinking, oh, Dugan's the one behind Kel. But then he ran off and he got killed. I was like, wait, what? So what's this all about? But then like Tana Seda's memory of like, oh, look at all of them, you know, it pieced it together. Right, right. So the fact of the matter is like when they were all gathered and you're just like, the elders, they killed an elder. Like this whole planet was built off of genociding another species. Because we've already heard that basically like the technology that came from stacks, you know, obviously it was Nadia who made it, but the fact is the technology already existed by another alien species, but the entirety of this story, we had never really seen them, and now we kind of understand why. Because basically, Harlan, as well as all the founders of Harlan's world, ended up killing all of them. And so that's what set it off in my mind to understand that, you know, because uh, especially what was happening with her, uh, with uh, Kel, because the fact didn't matter, she couldn't remember anything, but it also seemed like she had these split personalities between being kind of herself, but at the same time, this cold-blooded killer, especially... The, because they never really, I guess that's just something elders can do, but the whole like poison they can, it can use, um, it kind of reminds me of the Rawlings, Rawlings virus because basically that wipes out someone's, um, oh, your backups. So I wonder like, does a, is a Rawlings virus like a byproduct of like some elder, I mean, it, it's probably based on some elder technology or something like that. Because like she's able to kind of kill um, someone's stack as well as just every backup they have. Uh, in an instant just by touching them so it, it spreads like the rolling because like, the moment like the veins start popping that's what I thought was immediately but it was like oh I guess it's not uh, it's so interesting because obviously the entire time they were looking for the weapon the weapon was in front of them the entire time which is also ironic considering that's kind of the whole thing that Kel taught the envoys in the first place that their bodies are the weapons th their sleeves are a tool so it just I think it's kind of interesting when you actually really break that down and think about like oh her body ended up being the weapon ended up being the tool you know, in the grand scheme of things, because obviously, you know, because um, I love like cause we like we learn about the whole situation with um, with Trap. We already got the whole thing about her brother, you know, Anil. But now it's like, oh, yeah, like her uh, daughter, uh, I mean, her um, her wife and her son. We end up finding out that basically like she's got this complicated life where it's kind of like her search for her brother kind of has taken precedence over like well because the fact is we learned that her son got killed because he like stepped on the mine and obviously they were able to get him in a new sleep but they're still paying that off but you can also show like how like almost it's sadly that trip kind of puts her family her family comes first to her actual you know her brother comes before her wife and daughter I mean son I don't know why I keep saying daughter geez I don't know why that kind of is the first thing to come in my head regardless the, the fact of the matter is it's because she put all that money up to get any information about her brother rather than taking care of her actual you, you know what i'm saying so it's just, it's interesting i mean i get you know you know i, I understand why because uh, you know her brother's like the you know once again her job has always been looking after her brother so she wanted to find him you know he's been missing all this time but i just thought that was kind of interesting obviously you know with this whole kel and um talk situation she goes along because like they want to meet up with the uh, um the um the kellis because it's like maybe they can give them some information besides keep kel safe but it also turns out talk used as an excuse because he wanted kel to be reminded go back to stronghold so maybe she can get her memories back but obviously she's losing herself more and more um the fact of the matter is it, it, she did eventually get her memory back, but that's me skipping over the biggest plot point because I was wondering about this whole trailer thing where it's like we saw in a trailer like Tox original life. So I'm like, oh, did they make a like I was like, oh, what happened in this case? Did not expect a twist where it's like, oh, Jaeger actually had a copy of Tox and basically spun him back up in a copy of his body. So it's interesting because now Tox is double sleeved yet again because that was a whole thing last season. Now we got kind of a repeat of it under different circumstances because that was a that was a uh, double sleeving of Tox as he is now, uh, well as he was in season one. This is Tox 
prior working with the protectorate before he met up, before he found out about Raylene, before he found out about, you know, Kel and the um Envoys and everything, so I was like, "Oh, because basically Jaeger is this is the talk that serves Jaeger so wholeheartedly and believes everything." It's like, "Yeah, this also he uh, he killed your sister and everything too." And it's good because you even I even love that piece of crap kind of like manipulating things earlier. It's like, "Oh yeah, like this is the guy who killed all his allies. He killed his father. It's like you know why he killed his dad. His dad was an abusive piece of shit that killed his mom and was hurting him and his sister more so than his sisters because that's the way talk's always been. He cares about other people more than himself. He's willing to put his own life at risk but he won't put other people's lives there he doesn't want to you know and so it's just it was just kind of crappy hearing Yeager kind of say that but now he's like manipulating OG talk uh into going after uh this talk because it's like oh and even the fact is that OG talk is willing to like be so brutal even to the point he ended up killing Trep's dad because Trep's dad wouldn't give him up uh, give her up, and he just ended up crushing his stack, and I was like, holy crap, and then it kind of turns into a confrontation, it's like, we both know each other's moves, but the problem is, like, yeah, they've had the same training, except our talk, the talk that we've kind of followed this entire time, trained with Kel, she taught him more than everything that talk learned with the uh, protectorate, so... He was kind of winning until he got thrown off the cliff. And I even love Tok trying to pretend, like, you know, because Kel gets her memories back. And she's like, oh, Tok. And she's like, what happened? You had a different... He's like, yeah, that was a fake. And it's, I was like, is she getting, you know, pulled into this? Because the moment she... Because she didn't say it. Because he was like, what do you see? And she looked, grabbed him, and she she touched his face. She didn't say, I see the boy and the man. That right there was kind of the clearest thing. Because, like, when she... Because even without her memories, when she did that to Tok when he's in Anthony Mackie's body, she... Uh, which is weird for me to refer to it as Anthony Mackie's body, but that's the only way I can kind of distinguish that. But it's like the moment she did that, she was like, I see the boy inside the man. She didn't even have her memories, but there was some spark of her remembering saying that, like, you know, or at least it was kind of like showing how true those words are that she But the moment she saw OG talk, she didn't say that. So you can tell she was leading along. And I really like that we got a lot of exposition into like, well, what ended up happening to Kel, like why uh, Raylan had her this entire time. And basically there was recordings that, you know, uh, she took talk to where she was at and it kind of, you know, plays the things. And, you know, it's like she like. We find out Raylan's plan was for both her and Talk to be on that airship. She wasn't counting on um, Kel. Because even I was wondering, I was like, why did you back her up? I don't get why you would do that. Like, it seemed like you hated her, but now we do. Her being on the ship in general, uh, that, I guess it was like a, 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 um, uh, a, ra a radius type of thing like as long as you're in a certain radius you get backed up her plan was to kind of get her and talk backed up because her plan was always to spend forever with her brother well the fact of the matter is that, that and she ended up hating Kel because it's like my brother left me behind it's like you betrayed everyone even your own brother and he's like obviously and then Raylan came back every so often it came back like a hundred years later and that's why like you know like Kel, you know, and the thing is, luckily, I think it's because Kel is as mentally strong as she is. She fortified her brain, her mind, made her mind stronger than anyone else's. So, like, that 100 years, like, her mind was active. She, Her body might have been, you know, in stasis, but her mind was free, and she was kind of essentially awake the entire time. And you could see OG talk to me, like, wait, what? Because he's seeing, like, his sister in a way he never saw her before, which obviously you had, like, uh, Yeager being like, no, it's not like that at all. Don't believe these lies and stuff like that. Because, you know... Because, you know, well, well, we'll get to that, you know, soon enough. But it, it started making him go like, wait, because now we understood like, you know, everything, you know, because you could tell in that fast forward, this, like, oh, here's 100 years and here's another point later. Like, because the last time Raylene visited Kel, it was like, I think right before she set everything in motion to get what well, is basically before everything in season one got set in motion of like Bancroft and everything. Because she talked about having a plan to get her brother back and everything. But once again, it's got to be a hard situation for OG talk. Because the last time he remembers seeing his sister, she was that little girl. Because he thought, like, oh, she was happy. She was okay. I can go off and do all this because everything I'm doing is for her sake. And the fact is that she's going to be okay. Uh, but later on, he, you know, 
talk talks to him, the, you know, our talk talks to him and tells him like, oh yeah, Jaeger lied. He ended up selling her to the Yakuza and everything. And Jaeger's like, no, no, it didn't go down like that. But it's like, the fact is both you and I and something Kel ended up learning pretty early on too. It's like, well, I think it might even been Ray uh, learned early. I, can't, I think he said Kel, but I can't remember. It's basically to protect her, it protects itself. It never had any, Jaeger had no intention of ever protecting, you know, Ray. It was just for the, um, it just needed what he needed to do to kind of, you know, raise me. And for, you know, Ray, because uh, that was even a line he told, because Yukido was like, yeah, so not, um, son, my father isn't your father. And he was like, Yukido, I'm not here to take your father. He's like, I've had enough with father figures because he had to deal with his own biological dad and all the bullshit connected to Jaeger. It's like, of course you'd be done with dads. You have no reason to have any dad because like literally two have failed you and caused you so much pain. It's because of these people like so much went wrong in your life and everything. So it is kind of crazy. I wasn't expecting like both talks to stick around the entire season. I thought that was kind of a nice, interesting, you know, touch. I also really like that badass moment of like, obviously Kel obviously had gotten her memories back. So she basically has to go through a ritual to prove herself to the other envoys, uh, to the um, Keltists that she is really who she is and having to answer questions while also proving herself both mentally and physically. But she knew a story about Kemp that she shouldn't know. That basically all those years ago, um, like uh, uh, ancestors of his hid her. Um, and the reason why uh, wouldn't give her up because she protected his daughter. So uh, a future, uh, a later ancestor of uh, Kemp's. But then it's kind of sucky because obviously like Trep ended up finding out like, oh, do you know where my brother is? I was like, oh, I'm not remembering her faces and blah, 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 blah. But then like her coils start reacting to one of his, the stacks around his neck. And it's like, that's her brother. And it's like, okay, so immediately setting it up to be like all right so that solidified even more like yeah because i was thinking like the moment like uh she looked into it like oh did they get our message or whatnot i was like you're gonna find out they didn't get your message and then the whole thing was like if they never got our message how did they find us and it start playing out like that sadly they ended up having to kill all the the other Celtists. they actually were believers in all of this kemp was the only one but it, there was no time to really explain that to the rest of them so they all had to kind of get taken down um, and then there's that whole situation with like the, um, angel fire, you know, like Kel, like bringing it down like that I was like, holy shit. And like, that was actually pretty brutal. Like literally blue, it, it was like hellfire coming down and like burning the bodies like that. It kind of looked reminiscent of what ended up happening in, um, stronghold all like the ash in the sky it just kind of reminded me a little bit of that especially like all the bodies were so burnt literally everything was so burnt it was reminiscent of that because even at one point kel had touched the song spire and i think that hit her because like she saw what happened to the other envoys because the only person that ever saw that was talk so the others never she never she never got to see that so you know that was kind of her first instance of seeing like these people she trained uh for this fight to see them kind of you know like that you know Something I else I haven't, you know, I actually have talked about it. I was like, Mets kind of all end up sucking, don't they? Because every time you turn around in the show, you never really meet a good meth. You meet all of them who are just pretty shitty. They're just so kind of like, they, they're so high up on their own farts and stuff like that. Because even Danica, like she ends up manipulating situations to get power and stuff like that. Because like so many pe people question her power and basically everyone that was a part of her cartel, they ended up kind of giving her the power and she basically locked them up because like, oh, I knew that you guys were um, home dude that ended up dying. The dude that's, uh, he's one of the founders, um, uh, Dugan. Uh, she ended up like, oh, I know all of you were working with him. So then she kind of takes over everything because basically she wants to keep the uh, protectorate kind of at bay because it turns out like what this all stems from is because basically the protectorate was basically bleeding them drive the alloy. It's like we kind of got here on Harlan's world. We got treated as second class citizens. We literally supply what makes stacks possible so if it wasn't for us like the materials are on our planet we should be getting a little more respect so obviously her but her dad ended up kind of handing over a lot more of that stuff you know the materials and stuff like that hence like you know because poe ended up kind of going on his own adventure of like you know trying to track down um, her father conrad because it's like maybe he'd be the key to potentially figuring out like you know a way to help kel in some shape or form and just figure out you know what's going on but Poe ended up kind of going there. Uh, interestingly enough, it's uh, the actor who plays uh, Dr. Uh, Cerberus on uh, 
Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, but uh, Poe, you know, obviously he's being kind of fractured, you know, mentally as he is because, you know, um, Dig was going to help, uh, but it, try to find a potential cure for him so he wouldn't have to reboot himself and forget everything. And even there, him seeing Lizzie again, you know, for him it's like, oh, is it just a recording or whatever? Because he wanted to, he had previously talked to a recording of Lizzie. I guess it was the last message they had um, to she had sent to him, and he just wanted to um say kind of essentially in a pseudo sense say goodbye to her uh before it ended up rebooting because he ended up forgetting her but um yeah it, it seemed nice at first but then like everything about that world started crumbling because it's like wait uh conrad isn't really here and it's like okay so at that point you kind of figure it's like so Danica had to have done something to him to kind of remove him from the equation it's like but why interesting i wouldn't even talk about it but her dad it's played by um Freaking Neil McDonough, which is interesting because obviously he plays Damien Dark in the Arrowverse. But actually, you know, once again, it's like, well, you know, there's um, Michael Shank who played, you know, Hawkman. So it's like a DC connection there. Like, as I'm drawing, like, too many parallels, but I just thought that was interesting. But regardless. Hell, since I'm already making a, a DC connection, let's not forget, like, the actor who plays uh, Trepp's dad uh, plays uh, John Jones, a.k.a. Uh, Martian Manhunter's dad on Supergirl. So it's just like even more DC connections there I didn't even think about. Uh, regardless of, you know, g getting caught up in uh, tangents and stuff like that. But it was interesting kind of learning Jaeger's uh, reasoning behind everything that he does. Because, like, for him, he's all about, like, old justice and stuff like that. It's, like, it's so interesting that, I guess, he he's so deluded in what the, like, Protectorate does that he kind of, I mean, I guess in his mind, it's like, oh, we bring the peace in the, um, in the um, settled world, but at the at the day he talks about the fact that oh I don't need a name and all that like I just need you know I'm doing my job is an honor. It's like no, the moment Danica offered you an opportunity to make your name known, like oh no one will ever go without knowing the name Jaeger. It's like you're such a piece of crap. You 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 want to be recognized, but also understanding everything he's doing for Talk is because because I was trying to understand. It's like why do you have such a personal vendetta against Talk? And it's like because Talk betrayed you. He was like because Talk was looking at Jaeger as like a father figure. I think Jaeger kind of reciprocated that a little bit. Was kind of like oh like I feel nice to be you know that special someone to someone, but also you're kind of that for me. You are kind of basically my son. He does refer to him as son a lot. And I think that's what that was about. You know, it's like for him, because he put all his dreams and everything into talk. It's like, you're the first one. I've trained so many people, but no one took to it like talk did. The fact of the matter is you're the only one that took every lesson, everything I, you know, gave to you and made it your own. And it's like, I was expecting you to be better to me, but then you ended up betraying me. That's why he worked with Ray. Because it's so twisted. Because both of them wanted the same thing. For different reasons. Kind of opposite sides of the spectrum. But both of them wanted talk back. Because they both love talk so much. And it's like, I want it back. But it's also, I'm wondering what that would have turned into with the whole year. Because it's interesting. Because I guess in a sense, because Jaeger was fine with kind of locking him up forever. Just to be, I mean, I think that's, that's why Jaeger couldn't bring himself to kill talk. Because he still cared about talk regardless, you know? So it's just, it's kind of interesting to kind of see that all kind of come full circle. I mean, even the whole thing about Raylene, because even, you know, um, our talk talks to OG talk about like the whole Raylene thing. It's like, it's like what he, because OG uh, talk was like, how, what kind of man would kill his sister, his own sister? And our talk is like the same guy that killed his father. Raylene knew that. Like in that moment, she could have stopped us, but she didn't because she wanted it to be stopped because she's like, if you don't do this, I'll keep going because she recognized the monster that she basically became and trying to, you know, stop that. She didn't want to keep going anymore because she felt that she was lost along the way. She saw how the, where, the way her brother looked at her, the way she just looked at herself. I think she recognized that and she didn't want to be that monster anymore. So she knew that the only person that would be able to stop her is talk, you know, and he kind of recognizes that, that or at least that's what he believes, you know. Another element to this whole situation that's kind of sad, it's because, because like I brought up earlier, because Tak is so preoccupied with the whole um, Kel situation, him and Poe kind of end up, you know, on bad terms. Because obviously, you know, um, uh, Tak hires 
uh, dig to replace Poe, which even Poe's like, no, we're, we're friends, because he's like, despite everything, despite the way, you know, uh, Talk ends up talking to him, it's like, Talk is still, you know, it's like, that's still someone that he considers a friend, like, Talk would never leave him behind, but now it kind of felt like that, and, you know, Dig is like, I'm sorry I took this job from you, but I needed this because I needed to be with a, a purpose, because without the digs and stuff like that, I had no purpose, I was just sitting around, and, you know, obviously Poe knows that, because he went a long time not having a purpose until he met Talk last season, it, he found he found a friend he found a new purpose you know and you know even though he wasn't you know because he'd even had this interesting conversation with Kel he ends up kind of forgetting it part way through but the question is like her not remembering who she was was she okay with that because it was making him decide like what you know he needed to ask someone who had experience with losing who they were it's like but for her, she made a dis um, conversation of it's like being lost at sea, like being so far, being out at sea and, you know, land. You just kind of like you can't, you know, it, it feels that kind of great of a distance, you know, that even though it's underneath you, it's kind of just it feels so far away, you know. And I think it's just a thing of like not kind of, you know, wanting, you know, it's that complicated thing of holding on to who you were versus kind of just letting it go. And that was kind of a complicated thing for Poe. Um, whether they, you know, but I, like I said, it did kind of talk them out of, you know, going down the route until she could, you know, procure um, some avenue for him to be able to store his memories before like rebooting so he could fix himself, but then eventually uh, re get all his memories back, you know? But um, at the end of the day, when it came to like saving Kel and everything, you know, he's like, you know, Taka's like, I know I've been an asshole to you, but the fact of the matter is, I do trust you. I'm trusting you. I'm I'm trusting you enough to put Kel's life in your hands. Like, keep her alive for me. Because, like, we know my life isn't worth a damn, but hers is, you know? And shows you the fact is what Link's talk is. Because he already lost her once. And he recognizes what kind of a person, you know, Kel is. The fact of the matter is her fight. Everything that she's done. Like, the world needs someone like her, you know? And so, going inside of, like, you know, uh, trying to basically... Uh, firewall off the um what's inside of her at the time because you know because once again it's like talk kind of pieced it together like poet brought it up before because there's a whole conversation about like whether or not it was actually um you know kel in the beginning that maybe it was someone running around in her sleep but now in retrospect it's like well now like talk ends up putting together like well maybe we were right maybe we were right that basically there's been two consciousnesses inside of her stack hers as well as this invader and talk ends up learning the truth about everything, uh, especially because it turns out um, Trap went inside of her brother's uh, stack because basically he was suffering from the same condition that basically um, Kel was passing on to other people and Kel herself was kind of going through it. So basically... Um, he ended up discovering something. He's like, oh, it could change the world. Basically, he found where Ray ha uh, Raylan had hidden uh, Kale's body because the whole point was like hide it in plain sight because this is where Tak will come to look for you. But because this will be the same spot, he'll end up walking right past you. And in Raylan's mind, that's the ultimate revenge. Like my brother would be so close to you, yet at the same time so far away because he won't recognize that you're here. But like obviously, uh, Neil ended up stumbling across, and it's actually sad because it's like you know, uh, he said this thing about his sister that she never cared about stuff like you know the Celtics or stuff like that. All she cared about is kind of like her job and getting paid up front and stuff like that. And she's like, that's not true, you know. But she never really got an opportunity to really kind of make up with her brother, you know. I mean, same thing with her dad. Her dad died before. It's like you know, it's like the last conversation they had. It was kind of a harsh conversation, and it's like you never got an opportunity to kind of make up with either one of them. It's kind of sad. Like it's kind of like a repeat of just you know what went down with Kristen, like the complicated situation with her family and it's just like there's just never enough time you know you always got to cherish the people that are around you you know you never know when they might kind of slip away i mean especially in a world like this where like life it works the way it does like you do you, you know everyone in this world takes uh life and death for granted you know but uh nevertheless that's what kind of inspired Tuck to figure out like wait they were infected by another consciousness and going inside he ends up confronting the fake uh, Kel, which he shows, it shows like this kid and everything. I was like, oh, is this actually something Kel wants? But Taka's like, you're showing me what I want. This isn't what Kel wants. You're not Kel. 
and it ends up being the elder because basically it, it explains what happened, why it had. And I like that how it went about that, especially when they're fighting, because like obviously because he's an envoy, he's learned how to control control the construct. But this thing has learned from Kel as well, so it's learned how to control the construct. And so they're literally flipping through different constructs, even at one point falling from the ceiling and landing on that bed. I thought that was so like I thought that was kind of like very like in, a little inceptiony um type of vibe to it. I thought that was pretty dope. But it kind of explaining like that uh, talk can never understand uh, because it's like oh me and her me and Kel came to an understanding like this is this is my revenge and everything which we didn't get I didn't quite understand but we got we'll get to that in a second but um it never came down to it but I think the the thing ended up and the elder ended up under, underestimating like talk understands talks lost a lot especially in Songspire uh, in the stronghold uh, near that Songspire he lost. Every like it's a, you know he lost that new family that being the envoys you know um, he lost that and you know it was at the hands of his own sister and at the same time you know there was there was so much behind that but it never came down to that because I guess at the same time it's like it's not the same thing you might have lost those people but it's like this elder basically lost children like it's like can the whole can you hear them screaming thing uh, was because um, because basically. Um, uh, Conrad wanted to make a fight. It's like they found the world, but it's occupied, and they had to talk to the protectorate about that. But it's like rather than doing that, it's like no, we're going to pretend like we found a world that was completely empty, and they literally wiped out an entire species. The only reason why this elder is alive because the song spires are literally the the basis of stacks, and so the song spires ended up downloading at least one elders, you know, in, inside of it because elders are such grand beings that it's too much for any one person to handle. So that's why when it went from, um, um, uh, Anil to all his friends, it ended up killing all of them immediately. But when it went to, uh, Kel, she was able to handle it because of how strong she made her mind and, and they ended up coming to a compromise. Any normal body would break because of that. Um, it only lasts as long in Jaeger's body because of the enhancements to the wedge. Which, when I hear the wedge, it just makes me think of Biggs and Wedge. That's just where that immediately comes to in my mind. Uh, I even I didn't even talk about it, but like when um, Trep ended up saving um, Talk, it's like, yeah, how did this? Oh, yeah, she, yeah, Kel was with some guy that was pretty. Comes, it's like, yeah, that was um, basically the old me. And she's like, so you did this to yourself? And he was like, uh, it's complicated. And then later on, she's like, so that, and later on, she's like, that's you? He's like, like I said, I'm complicated. How that even gets more complicated when it's like, obviously, you know, because uh, it was a while later when um, Trep ended up finding out about her dad. And obviously it's that thing of like, you know, OG talk was like, yeah, maybe, maybe we should go here because he knew what he did. And it was a whole thing of like, you know, and, you know, talk is like, this is the first time you've ever had to deal with the consequences of something you did because he was always a loyal soldier. He was a loyal killer to Jaeger. And now it's a situation of now that he's kind of changed. Now you're seeing the consequences of it because that change didn't come too soon because you were still just that rabbit dog working for Jaeger for the protectorate and you ended up like break you you didn't have to do that you could have you could have messed him up you could have done this you could have killed his slave but you destroyed his stack you killed him you know so you RD'd him so it's just like that's you know very like it's, it's sad in the end especially because now that he has gone through the process of changing hell it's like he got the uh protectorate you know to follow uh the signal uh because he had basically infected um dig which that was so harsh because he was like basically pushing using overrides to basically control her and she was like no that information isn't available she started crying because like he was kind of forcing his way into her mind and um because I think, you know, because that also was a thing for Poe, because Poe wanted to help her later on, because she's like, no, I'm okay. It's like, he literally helped Lizzie through an invasion in her mind, the trauma of it, and he wanted to kind of help her in any shape or form, but it, it didn't work out that way, because she was just, I think she was a little scared to kind of go down that lane again, so she wasn't quite ready to confront it because of that. She didn't find the tracker that was in her files and everything. Um Obviously, you had Trap kind of going off on her own, as disguised as Tuck. And ended up, you know, uh, rescuing her family, uh, going all badass like that, just because, like, um, even it's like, you know, because even, um, 
Danica was like, you know, killing me is not going to do anything. And it's like, yeah, I know. And ended up putting a bullet in her anyway. I did. I, I, like I said, because I'm all over the place. I didn't even talk about like the whole like Danica strapping those uh, people. Because at first, because that's actually where I thought her dad was the entire time. Because it was like, wait, there's people in that like that wing of like the prison and stuff like that. Because obviously like uh, Jaeger was interrogating that woman who helped Kel and uh, Tok escape. But I was wondering like, because she was like, oh, I saw stuff on the security camera. I thought the whole thing was like her dad was actually being held there and she didn't want anyone to know so that's why she was doing that but it seemed like she got rid of those prisoners in particular so I was like okay but then it kind of went back to what I was thinking it's like she's like yeah all those interrogations you should ask you know um Danica about it. it's like right because she's perpetuating this lie about some like grand you know um like war that's going on between you know that uh the uh that Kemp and the uh Celtist are uh, which he ended up getting a, a body full of bullets because, uh, you know, she needed to keep his mouth shut about all that she was kind of up to. So the entire time we've always seen like, you know, kind of basically the skeleton of an elder. It was kind of neat for at least one scene to actually see what they look like. Uh, they do kind of look not necessarily angelic. Obviously, they actually look more demonic and stuff like that. I mean, more so than they're, they're alien species, but seeing like the wings and everything, it's like, right. Because the entire, this is like, our, you know, obviously, like I said, we saw uh, a skeleton of one in season one. Obviously, we see the same thing in, se in this season as well. So we had an idea kind of like what they kind of expect, but it was still kind of pretty neat to actually get to see what they look like. I mean, this literally being the last one and everything. So I wasn't expecting things kind of playing out the way that they did because basically they have to, um, basically convince Danica to kind of help them because it's like all right if we give if we basically feed that thing your father then maybe it will quell its anger because its anger is what's kind of pushing it forward but if we do that maybe its anger will be quelled and maybe it won't obliterate this world like it's planning to because I, I skipped over it but uh Kel basically made a deal with this thing like as long as it will help her get revenge as long as Kel will help it get revenge, it won't kill the rest of them. But basically, it got pissed because it felt like Kel was betraying them. And it's like, Tox need to save her, kind of put all of Harlan's world in danger. Probably, well, who, I would assume just all of Harlan's world in danger. And for her, it's like, this is the back and forth between us. It's like, all we do is we cause so much death and destruction because of us. Because, you know, Tox is like, if he had never, you know going there with Ray, like none of this stuff would have like things would have never unfolded the way they did, you know, and it's now his desperation to save her again has led to this situation. So it's like because obviously for talk, it's like if he if he hadn't joined up, if he, I mean, it also falls on Jaeger. If he had never listened to Jaeger, never got caught up in his BS, his sister wouldn't have ended up the person she was. She wouldn't have gotten sold off to the Yakuza. She wouldn't have been alone because talk was the only family she had in his world. That was the only person she had. That's why, like, she grew so twisted because uh, she had grown up because of the Yakuza thing. It made her cold and just kind of going for what she wanted. And that was her brother. And that obsession became twisted with time. You can make the same argument. Talk was under that same. I mean, granted, his obsession didn't come back into play until the last season when I was like, wait, Kel is alive. And it was like that was the whole thing of the conversation being like even love at the end of the day will turn to dust. I forgot who he, oh, I think he was talking to. um Tanaseda, he was like, I want you to prove the price for me getting you and Kel off planet would be for you to prove to me that that's wrong. And, you know, it's actually interesting. You can make the argument he was right in a more physical sense, wrong in a more emotional sense. I'll kind of get to that in a second, but. All the while this is happening, obviously Poe, you know, having to deal with like, obviously, like, because he ended up having to, you know, shut, uh, dig down for a little bit till like, you know, this whole situation was resolved because she felt like I can't be trusted to be around because they can track you guys through me. So it's like, but when this is all over, you kind of, you know, uh, bring me back up. And obviously Poe is dealing with the fact is that because his systems are going haywire, he can't help them track down with their orbital, orbital you know, you know, where uh, the elder inside of Carrera is. And it's interesting because obviously like the program that's in his head that was set up by Dig is in the form of, you know, Lizzie because it's like, oh, you might want to see a familiar face. Um, that basically when it's all said and done, that everything's going to have to be wiped if it means saving him because obviously, you know, and, you know, him and talk end up talking. It's like, you know, they can basically, it's kind of crazy to see that, you know, through everything that they are here that, you know, because talk was acting very like pessimistic about everything because like they could basically understand, you know, 
uh, basically having the second chances that they were given and just things being what they are. But Poe was like, if you don't squander this take, like he's like, I'm not going to squander the little time I have left. You shouldn't do the same thing because Kel kind of wanted to end things between her and talk because it's like we're caught in this cycle and so many people get caught in that destruction uh, because of all of that, you know, so much ends up happening because you're of your need to try and save me, our connection. Out, you know, it's like because Kel blames herself. It's like if I'd never gotten close to you, maybe nothing would have ever happened, you know. Uh, because even Ray wouldn't have gone down the path she did if Kel had never gotten close to, you know, talk. But we end up finding out like what her plan is that basically her plan is that if it doesn't work, basically get close enough to the elder, kill it inside of Carrera and then have it go inside of her using the angel fire to burn herself and the elder killing it once and for all. This is like for her the only way that, you know, and for talk, it's like, why do you have to fix things that, by dying? Like, you know, why? I, she's like, Cause I love you talking like, but you don't love me enough to f live, you know? And they kind of have that final moment together. But when the time comes, they go to like the needle casting thing. Um, OG talk goes to uh, Trep, ends up convincing her to come back because she walked away because like her coils and everything can't help. But it's, it's got to be, you know, this talk having to confront, you know, everything that he's kind of done is like, Kel sent me here knowing that you would most likely kill me. But the fact of the matter is I'm still here anyway, because it's like. The fact of the matter is you have something you need to do that you can do because like if you don't do this, it's not just, you know, everyone else is going to suffer. Your family is going to die in the wake of, you know, the angel fire as well. So I should have figured I figured as much Danica had a plan. I didn't expect it to be a gun. I thought it was going to be like a um, a bomb or something because she's like, oh, I've got, you know, Kelcrest and I've got um, the last envoy. I don't what else. I What else do I need? Um you know what just made me remind me of uh, I did, was making this point about the whole fact is that uh, earlier um, talk had said like oh like we don't need weapons like what, after that whole trap saving his life thing uh, I was like we don't need weapons and it's like because we are the weapons which trap was like what does that even mean I was like I'm bringing what Kel said to you taught you back full circle and they ended up proceeding to take down all those um, uh, protectorate soldiers um, even at one point, him throwing the knife through the dude's mouth and being like, you, you know, you're uh, now we're even because he saved Trep that time, which is like very reminiscent of just obviously the whole thing of like when he throws the knife at Kel because it had came up this season too. She grabs the knife. It's kind of reminiscent of that, except uh, obviously no catching the knife on that dude's part unless it's like, you know, catching it from the back of your neck as it pokes through your mouth. Type, you know, you're catching it in that regard. But that was just kind of flashing in my head because it just made me think back to like, all right, when Trep was in his body, it's like, yeah, making that's kind of like the whole point of an envoy that they can go into anybody and kind of like take it to its full potential because they are, you make any sleeve your weapon, essentially make it you make it so that you own any sleeve. So in that moment, you can almost think like I think it also might come from the fact is that Trep's body is that her sleeve is that of a scent because uh, it can change. I mean, maybe scents all kind of have different capabilities, but I think they're able to kind of look however the, that you want them to. I think that's what that kind of comes down to. Um, that's how I, I take that. But regardless, because uh, I'm pretty sure um, that's the case. But like, you know, because that's what Lizzie ended up in at the end of season one. She was in a synth, a synth. Uh, but regardless. Oh, yeah, because I didn't even talk about it either. Like Danica was bringing her dad who was dead because it's like, oh, once again, uh, you know, if you're going to do a coup, you're going to go full throttle because she ended up not only killing her dad, basically wiping out all his drives. But she was a little cement sentimental because like I miss him from time to time. So I keep him close to me. It's like that's actually super messed up and super morbid. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, you know, Danica, it's like, oh, because I guess she thought like, oh, like I wasn't you thought I was going to believe this elder story because it seemed like the elder was going to listen. But Danica had to do what she did and kind of make her moves. It's just like the arrogance of, you know, meths. They think because at the end of the day, she wanted the power of angel fire because that way it could keep like she would be the one in control that uh, um, the protectorate would kind of have to bend to her will now. Like once again, meths kind of end up being all obsessed with power and stuff like that. Granted, it didn't work out well for her in the end because obviously uh, the elder ended up killing her anyway. But then you have like Kel and Top, you know, fighting, you know, the elder inside of Carrera's body. Lo and behold, who else shows up? 
OG Talk steps up into the play and they end up kind of fighting, which was pretty dope. It's like a three way. I'm like, yo, this is sick. Um, but obviously, Kel was planning on killing, obviously, the thing, you know, doing her plan. And, you know, it's like, we we can't let her die. And OG Talk is like, I follow your lead. And they both go into the, into the fight. And, you know, Talk has got Jaeger. And it's like, you know, it, it's only symbiotic. It's very um, symbolic is what the word I was trying to think of for the old end with um, Talk our talk he's the one that ends up putting Jaeger down well he kind of because he can't actually do it because the body he's in is that of a um wedge and the wedges can't hurt each other but it's like well um and so he ends up using it to um kill uh basically forcing forcing um him to um kill himself and that in turn makes the um elder go inside of him and obviously, OG Talk is holding Kel back, and he's telling her the last words that they kind of said to each other was kind of like him telling her to survive, and he hits himself with the angel fire. And I won't lie to you, I was starting to tear up. I was like, I was like, what? Like, there was some part of it was like, Talk might die at the end of things, but I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this circumstances. Hell, I was even starting to think maybe other Talk. You know, once again, it is almost like things common coming full circle because it literally came down to, hey, like the double sleeving talk last season. One of us has to die. And it came down to it. And our talk came out to be the one that ended up surviving, you know, and um, the the uh, copy um, ended up being the one that um, ended up dying. But now it's like on the other end of it, the copy ended up living while the original ended up dying. Uh, I wonder did they do that on purpose? There probably is some like through line to that, but you know, and even you know, uh, Trep comes in time just to see that, and it's like Tok sacrificed himself because there was no even saving his um, his um, geez, uh, stack. Because when when um, Kel pulls it out, it's already crumbling into ash. I'm like, whoa! So he's he's straight up dead. And Poe was trying to write something down at the last moment because he saw what was happening. And, you know, the program pulls him away and resets him and everything. And so, at first I was like, oh, so does, wait, does that mean going forward we'd be following this other talk? Because like, that, that, that's actually kind of shitty because I was like, that talk is a talk that didn't go through everything. Like, he changed a little bit. He gained, like, seeing, you know, uh, Kel, you know, give a speech and everything. He kind of started getting seduced into, like, that world, like, willing to follow her, much like, oh, uh, like, um, our talk had as well, you know. So it, it was it was interesting in the in the long run. Like you know, I was thinking like you know that's where we were going with this. But the point I was making is like that talk didn't go through that whole experience. He didn't you know go through the trouble. He lost Kel, but not to the same extent our talk uh, did. He didn't go through everything through season one. Though, like he know he knows what went down, but he wasn't the one to experience. And I was like, that kind of sucks. So I was like, but it kind of I was like, well, this talk kind of gets a start over. And I'm like, so does that mean? And our, and Poe kind of does too. So I'm like, oh, there's parallels in that too. But um, basically, uh, talk was around to be like, yeah, the fact of the matter is, this is what went down. Telling the protectorate like what was up and everything. But obviously he's secretly working with Kel because she's going out there to, you know, travel the settled world because it's like, yeah, like the uh, uprising is dead on this world, but she's going to go to other worlds to, you know, because for her, she she's going to, you know, um, she's going to fix all of this, but she's also going to live and talk is like, no matter where you go, I'm always going to be with you much like she was always with him. He's with her now, too, you know, and it's like. It, it, it's sad that things kind of ended up that way, you know, and at the end of the day, at least, you know, Trep, you know, she's there with her family and it's like, you know, there's some silver lining to this whole situation. I was like, I was actually going, holy crap, that's a bummer. You know, Diggs doing the voiceover. I was like, oh, does that mean Poe never came back? But Poe does come back at the end and say, hey, but he doesn't remember. I'm like, Jesus. I'm like, this is a depressing ass ending. But then it was actually kind of sweet because she's like, oh, your name is Poe. And, and she was like, oh, like because when she was going to pull something from the books, I was like, are you going to be Eleanor? Not Eleanor. It's Lenore. I always keep saying Eleanor. Quote the Raven nevermore. Cause the, the character from the, the Raven was her name was Lenore, right? It was or was it Eleanor? I think it was Lenore. But he, she ends up using the name from a different poem and it ends up being Annabelle. 
I'm slightly familiar with some Edgar Allan Poe because I remember reading it in high school. I think because I'm kind of a moody dude, like Edgar Allan Poe's shit kind of spoke to me, especially as an angsty teen. Uh, but it's just like, oh, like he's Poe and she's Annabelle. And I was like, oh, that's really sweet. Because I was wondering if that was, well, because obviously that, that's the whole thing. Because like even like the whole tale is called The Nevermore and obviously all that. But that was what I was wondering, like, because like rewatching season one, I was thinking, I was like, is that what Lizzie's supposed to represent? I mean, maybe that's what she was supposed to be like, kind of like a Lenore. Whereas this is Annabelle, maybe Lizzie kind of represented a Lenore, kind of, you know, that's what I was kind of curious about. But then it turns out like, wait, there's something up with Poe and inside of him is the DHF of another, a whole person. And it's like, he copied Tox uh, stack and it's like everything. It's like, and Dig is like, you need to go get the whiskey or whatever. So I'm like, dude, Tox is alive. I'm like, Yes. Which also means, like, once again, there's, like, two talks out there, potentially, because obviously there's OG talk, and depending on what, and, well, because obviously he's going to be feeding information to Kel, but, like, him potentially kicking it around, what does that mean for our OG talk? Like, you know, for him, it, well, I, I'm confusing it now, but, like, our talk, what, what's going to happen with him? Well, I'm sure he's going to go out there and try and join um, Kel, you know, because it's like, she's still got an uprising to start, and he believes in that cause, you know, because obviously, once again, we see what ends up being a byproduct of people who live too long, the MEPs and everything, and once again, we keep coming across MEPs who are kind of D-bags, but obviously, Tana Seda is kind of like the best one, because for him, even he kind of admitted, like, even though he wasn't a part of it, he was still a part of, like, wiping out an entire species, and it's like... The fact of the matter is, you know, he played his own role in it. He believed, you know, he deserved to die for what he did. You know, um, I guess it's that situation of, you know, we're all always living on borrow time. We just don't realize it. Because even he, because even um, Tuckett said that about Ray, like the moment he listened to Jaeger and joined SeaTac, that was the moment Ray started living on borrow time because things were always going to lead to that point just because of just the the way things were set in stone, you know? I'm not necessarily set in stone, but things were going to, you know, because that moment of him deciding to join with SeaTac is what set Ray's life down the path that it did and eventually leading her to want him to kill her just so that it can end essentially her madness, you know? So, very, very interesting spot to end off the season. At the time of me recording this, um, it hasn't been confirmed whether or not Netflix is renewing Ultra Carbon for a third season. I'm really hopeful that they do. To be fair, the season literally just came out today, so usually it takes some time with some of these Netflix properties and stuff like that. But I'm really hopeful, you know, to see what they end up doing. Like I said, especially if we've got two talks running around. The fact of the matter, he ends up having all these allies and stuff like that because he has... Um, he now has Trip. He also has, you know, Kristen and potentially Riker and obviously uh, uh, Vernon. So it's like, you know, and all that. So it's like, okay. So he's made a few allies along the way that are still around. So it's like, what that potentially can mean in the future? I don't know. Um, the fact is, I'm assuming he'd work with Kel to bring down. Uh, the Protectorate, because it's interesting because obviously we've met people within the Protectorate, but we haven't met like the higher hierarchy. Like, I'm curious to kind of understand, like, who are the Protectorate? Like, like, like who's at the center of this organization? Because like we obviously we saw we saw the founding of Harlan's world with the founders and stuff like that. But now, like, I love to learn the history of the Protectorate to understand, like, what it's all about, how it got started, how they ended up being in the power, being the power that basically watches over all of the settled worlds, like how something like that came to be, you know, and how, you know, Kel's war, you know, uh, what that, what's that necessarily going to look like as she takes like the next steps to kind of start up the uprising, potentially on other planets, kind of bringing forth other envoys, you know, so, and, you know, with talk being potentially back or, you know, whatever shape or form that ends up being, because part of me was wondering like, well, I'd assume he's going to be in a new body because we're probably just going to let like OG talk keep his body. I'd almost halfway expected our talk to end up with that clone sleeve. I expected that turned out not to be the case, but I'd love to see where they'd go because, you know, that's one angle of this that they've kind of handled. Like obviously that elder stuff, that's something they set up last season that they kind of brought back full circle. I'm also curious, like, would the next season take place purely on Harlan's world? Uh, because, you know, uh, you know, because that's where Poe and Dig are. And I doubt, like, you know, I doubt, you know, um, Talk would be taking uh, 
pull out, you know, especially like, you know, if he got something special waiting for him, that being um, Dig. It's also interesting because let's not forget Poe doesn't remember everything, but Tak will remember for the both of them. I mean, granted, that doesn't ease, that doesn't erase every, that doesn't ease everything that Poe had lost. But to be fair, Dig was like, I'm going to work to get you everything back, you know, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see what ends up happening in that regard as well. I, I'm, I'd be so curious to see what crazy next level you know, a season three would kind of, because a lot of stuff connected to Tox Pass has been dealt with. Raylene's gone, um, Jaeger's gone, so, like, a lot of his past has been tied up, but it's no longer about the past, it's about the future. But to be fair, like I said, with the Protectorate, it might deal with the past, just because understanding how they got to where they are, uh, what other meths are they going to cross paths? Are we going to finally find some meths that aren't complete D-bags? Once again, Tanaseda being, like, one of the few ones, um, I don't think I talked about that, but I was actually kind of surprised that Yukido thing ended up the way it did. It's like, oh man, I thought he was going to be more of a thorn. He was like, oh, we're planning to get revenge for his dad. Oh, immediately dead after. So I'm like, oh, that immediately got resolved. So it's so interesting because he ended up going after Talk, but OG Talk ended up being the one to put him down. It's interesting how that kind of ended up working out in the long run. But like I said, I, I you know, because I, I feel like they'll probably go bigger and even crazier. Because, I, I mean, who knows? In the third season, you know, that, that could be a lot of like world... Like, because obviously each season they stay on one particular world. You know, obviously they stayed in Bay City in season one. This, I mean, obviously with the exception of the flashbacks and stuff like that. And this season they stayed on Harlan's world. Like, maybe next season, if there is one, they can potentially hop between different worlds, especially if Kel is you know, getting her uprising started on other places. Maybe it'll stay on one particular planet next season, or maybe it'll bounce between different ones. Maybe by the time we catch up with Kel, she's already gotten so many already started. Um, I, once again, like I brought up, like maybe you'll see some familiar faces. We saw, like, obviously, once again, uh, familiar faces like Kristen and Vernon simply because they were fakes. But I'm wondering if we'll actually get to see them see them. Who knows? Because obviously there was 30 years in between season one and season two. Who knows how long it's going to be by the time talk actually gets spun back up uh, for season three, potentially. Like I said, if there is one, which once again, I am hopeful there is. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and Goodbye.